ghosts appear in many forms. We can see them. What was that? We can hear them. I am not afraid. And sometimes we can even feel them. We've gone around the globe in search of the most terrifying spirits and supernatural beings who continue to live on long after their deaths. On world's scariest hauntings, anything can happen. Because you never know who's watching when the lights go out. What the hell was that? In this episode, an 18th century prison that housed some of Britain's most notorious criminals. Bodmin Jal is synonymous with death because of all the unsavoury characters that were banged up in this penal institute. The spirits of men, women and children still walk the deathly corridors. For about 20 minutes, I'd been holding this child's hand, only to realise that obviously at one o'clock in the morning there wouldn't be a child in the jail and not living anyway. And should you come face to face with one, you'd better run. And it specifically said, get out. And at that time, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and that sense that you feel that something isn't right came over me. Bodmin Jail in Cornwall is an intimidating structure which overlooks the small town that shares its name. Built in 1779, the prison has housed many notorious criminals, some of whom were put to death right here in the ground. Some 240 years later, it's now a museum and soon to be a hotel complex, but it's believed that many of the spirits have never left the building. Bodmin Jail's resident clairvoyant and paranormal expert is Kirsten Honey. So we have a few examples here of customers, if you like, during the day that have come in. Uh, they've had some very strange occurrences with the way they feel. So they've suddenly become very faint to the point where they pass out physically. We have other people that have come through and, and run up to members of staff saying there's a child that they're very concerned about, for instance, with no shoes on and kind of roaming around looking lost. And so we've gone and investigated that, of course, and, and found there hasn't been a child present in the jail at that time. We have other things where people are touched or they hear random noises or they have their name spoken as well, which is quite unnerving for people when they come through the jail to hear their own name being spoken when they're standing in a room completely by themselves. Uh, that can be, for me, very interesting and not unexpected at all, but for other people who aren't used to it, like I am, very quite dramatic, in a sense. The paranormal manager at the jail, which was famed for its executions, is Mark Rablin. In the old days, they would have been taken to the lower gatehouse. These were the public executions, so prisoners were literally pushed off the wall at the front of the building and drew big crowds of people. But later on, they discovered that that wasn't so much a punishment, it's more of public entertainment it came down to. So they moved away from public sight and what we like to call the execution pit in the front yard. Prisoners were taken from there onto the trap doors, a hood and a loose, and then dropped. So, all over very quickly. A thousand pound force across the back of the neck. Mark started working here 13 years ago. When I first came here, I mean, it was literally, I just had my first heart attack. I couldn't drive my articulated lorry anymore. And I saw a night here at the jail. I thought, that'd be fun, I'll go and have a look. Didn't expect much. I experienced three different things in one night, and that kind of got me thinking, um, which literally changed the entire life. I mean, when I mean, you see a shadow of somebody run down the wall when there was nobody there, or you get pushed off a wall and then you have a pebble thrown at you across the floor. That kind of focused me a little bit, and I thought, well, I went off and studied up and took over. So I've experienced full manifestations walking past me. I've witnessed things move touch sensations being pushed 
loads of stuff over the time. The, the thing that keeps you here, because there's lots more still, I think, this building's got a lot more to give yet. Just inside the prison gates, a spirit has been captured on camera. In this area, we were doing our own after dark event here, and a couple had come out and taken some selfies in this area. What they captured from there was actually a picture of a lady stood behind them. These were once living humans, living people, not something like a non-human entity or just a random energy that would um, be defined in some areas of the jail. The photograph is a stunning example of the paranormal energy that exists at the jail. Full manifestations, partial manifestations, particularly caught on camera or, or on photographs, are actually quite a rare phenomena. We're very lucky if we see them with our own eyes, but to actually capture something that amazing is uh, an incredible thing indeed. A full-bodied manifestation of any figure or any entity is rare. You, you'll often see the person transparently or as clearly as you and I. They can be solid figures, they can also communicate and look at you and interact with you. And they're also deemed as intelligent spirits or intelligent hauntings. Bodmin Jail was first commissioned in 1778. It would house three separate prisons on the same site. One for minor offenders, a debtor's prison, and one for serious criminals. This building was originally constructed in 1779 and was a very modern building in its time. It was built under the John Howard Prison Reform Act. So we went from the old fashioned dungeon cells into the more modern type of building that you see today with one person per cell and a lighting and a heating system. For the time, the prisons were a very modern development and actually one of the first prisons built that were considerate of the prisoners in a way, so they were quite airy. There would be one prisoner to a cell. There were programs that enabled prisoners to work and even make money. So comparatively, they were quite well kept. It stayed operational right through until 1932, when it was decommissioned and sold at auction. During its 153-year history, many different prisoners spent time within the jail's imposing walls. We have cattle rustlers, we have potato stealers, uh, right through to murderers. Back in those days, anything connected to the food chain would have been a harsher sentence. So as livestock and anything like that could have got you executed back in the day. This extraordinary jail in the southwest of England has a dark history. Although originally built to house just one prisoner per cell, a crime wave spread across the country after the Napoleonic Wars, and by 1820, each cell was filled with multiple brutish criminals. So Bodmin Jail is considered one of the most haunted places in the UK because it was a site of death, of execution, and also harboured some very unsavoury characters. Very much how you are in this world is what I believe you are on the other side. So if you're a nasty person and you did bad things, it's gonna be the same for you on the other side. I definitely believe that those are the types of spirits you would come in contact with would be malevolent for sure. Local ghost hunter Jason Higgs has spent 14 years investigating the intimidating structure. Bodmin Jail, being so close, has always had a place in my heart. Having investigated here probably more times than anywhere else in the UK, the more and more you investigate, the more and more interesting Bodmin gets. And there's also something special about Bodmin. Bodmin itself is a living, breathing building. Even after closing its doors as a prison, the jail has continued to have a fascinating existence. In the wartime, obviously, the Germans, the Luftwaffe, came over and tried to bomb this place. Bearing in mind, the infantry were based around here. And they tried a number of times, and they failed. And after the war, it was taken over by a private ownership group who then wanted to reclaim the land and reuse the granite for a different structure. So they set charges, if you like, around the, the building to try and blow up all the granite, take the building down. 
and after a number of different goes, they took out a number of floors, but the actual structure of the building just didn't move, it didn't fall. Every single time I come to Bodmin Jail to do an investigation, we always find something or capture something or experience something that just can't be explained rationally. One such experience happened to Jason while he was hosting a paranormal investigation in the jail. I think probably the only time that I felt really uneasy, we were running a public night and uh, I was on this particular level and near the hangman's cell and we were running a device called the Ovulus which is a, a device that has about 10,000 words in it and depending on the sort of interactions using the sensors on the device will depend on what words it says and normally it will kick out one word at a time. Floating. <laughs> and on this level we were in this area and I specifically asked are you here? Would you like to communicate with us? And it specifically said, get, and then out pretty quickly. Get out. What the fuck was that? And at that time, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and that sense that you feel that something isn't right came over me. And I just felt, no, we need to move. We need to get out of here now. But many people can't resist the allure and continually return to Bodmin Jail, hypnotized by its fascinating history and supernatural energy. Between 1779 and 1932, Bodmin Jail housed thousands of criminals in its dark and oppressive cells, but not all the prisoners were adults. Many children served time here for petty crimes. And although they've long since passed, their impish spirits have remained. I've been here nearly three years and I have had many, many experiences. Some of the more profound ones for me um, are one being a child. I stood in what we used to call the long room at the time and I was listening to Mark doing his energy workshop. And it wasn't until the torches came on and light resumed, as it were, um, that I actually realised I'd been holding onto a little girl's hand. So for about 20 minutes, I've been holding this child's hand, only to realise that obviously at one o'clock in the morning there wouldn't be a child in the jail present, uh, not living anyway. <laughs> Paranormal investigator Sally Mason has hosted many ghost hunts at the jail. So many emotions. We have had guests cry and they don't even know why they're crying and they get very upset and they'll say, I don't understand why I'm crying, I don't feel that I'm upset and the tears are rolling down their face. And Sally too has felt the presence of the juvenile detainees. There seems to be children here in what we used to call the long room and they make themselves known in orbs, shadow figures, they will approach people, they play with the equipment that we used to bring and we used to bring toys and old Victorian dolls um, and all of our equipment used to react off it as well. We've done table tipping here and sang nursery rhymes at the same time. When you ask them to do something like turn a torch on or off, they tend to do it on command. And you know it's the children because you can hear sometimes laughing. But these playful young spirits may not be as innocent as they seem. Not all children are children. If you are a religious type person, they do say that uh, the non-human entities or demons are here to trick mankind. And it's very much what this energy does, it tricks mankind. So non-human entities can form in many different ways. They can initially latch onto a sensory perception of somebody's energy and build on that. They usually stick to one kind of energy themselves so they don't change. They can be false. They can make you believe something other than what you're actually experiencing and they can turn very quickly. Despite closing in the early 1930s, many dark spirits still remain locked away in the prison. Bodmin Jail has you know, a reputation as being a, sort of, uh, a place of death in many ways since it was used for quite a few executions. Some of the prisoners that were kept there had themselves committed murder and were frequently from desperate, difficult backgrounds. There wasn't a pleasant atmosphere to the place when it was in use. And I think you know, a lot of people think that something of that atmosphere has remained. 
in this gel here. This type of energy is a manifestation of all the trauma, the pain, the suffering. Basically, it draws energy. So we can't disperse it. You'll find that on this level here, this will be as high as that energy rises. In the classic mythology, that energy needs a ceiling. It likes to be confined, contained, but it likes to free roam around the building. It's no surprise that some of the spirits trapped inside Bodmin Jail are known to be malevolent. During its 153-year history, the bricks of the 18th century prison bore witness to 60 executions. Record attendance here at Bodmin was between 20 and 25,000 people turned up on a single day to watch the double execution of the Lightfoot brothers, William and James. They'd murdered a local merchant called Mr Norway, who was very popular in the town, and he drew a big crowd, that one. It was a double execution as well, so more spectacular than just one person. The last hanging in Britain took place in 1964, and capital punishment remained an option for anyone committing treason right up until 1998, when it was finally abolished. But back in the 1700s, you didn't have to commit a particularly heinous crime to end up at the gallows. I believe there's something like 120 different crimes that would have got you initially executed. Everything from stealing a headscarf, um, vagrancy, any kind of theft of shop properties, um, and depending on the judge as well. Some of our judges were definitely the execution types. Um, if you stood before them and he didn't like the look of you, that was it, you were history. One of Bodmin Jail's most famous inmates was William Bartlett, who was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death on November the 13th, 1882. William Bartlett was executed here for the murder of a child. He was a quarry manager and uh, basically had a child at a wedlock. He said he'd look after the child, but in reality, he strangled the child and dropped her down a mine shaft and was late to court. And he came here and he was executed off the side balcony scaffold. 135 years to the day after Bartlett's execution, November the 13th, 2017, paranormal investigator Tony Ferguson was down in the basement of the jail when suddenly the lights went out. Straight away we're thinking, is it an electric fault? Um, waiting there for about two or three minutes just for the lights to come back on. We're looking upstairs just thinking, how, how comes all the rest of the lights are on? And you get this eerie feeling of someone watching you. So we went upstairs to go and speak to staff. Basically, it's they said to them that the lights have gone out and they just sort of looked at us in shock, said, no, the lights are fine. I said, well, no, the bottom cells, the lights just went out for about two or three minutes. Is there like an electric fault or something? They sort of looked in shock and got uh, Kirsten to come out and um, speak to us. She was quite shocked. She said that if those lights would have gone out, the other lights would have gone out. So we've gone back down there, so we know that there's something down there trying to communicate. So I put the camera down just to see if anything was following us. And obviously it just thought, oh, they're not filming now, you know, and just walk past quickly. Tony's incredible video of the moving figure is a rare and fascinating capture. It's almost like they don't want to be seen, but you've got to manipulate them kind of thing and play tricks on them rather than do it to you. The video clearly displays an apparition moving across the screen there in the basement of Bodmin Jail. It is a dark silhouette type figure, but it has some form of light anomaly around the head part of the apparition. Could the ghostly manifestation be William Bartlett walking to the gallows exactly 135 years before? Tony's footage was very interesting on the day because it was open to the public. They were down here and uh, he placed his camera statically just off to my right. And then down here, literally on the video footage, you see what looks like a gentleman walk from right to left across the shot. We checked our video footage and uh, we checked the people that were in the building and we can confirm that there was no extra members of the public down here. So on the day, that was a brilliant capture, if you like, when they weren't really trying. 
you could try as hard as you like to record paranormal stuff, and they would do stuff when you least expect them. You know, and it was on the anniversary of the execution of William Bartlett. The timings were perfect. We're not saying it was William Bartlett, but potentially it could have been him, it could have been a priest, it could have been a member of staff, but they were certainly down here heading in the right direction and a full manifestation. Some experts believe that apparitions like the one Tony captured are echoes of the past. Residual hauntings are consumed by the fabric of the building, so they're actually a replay. So what you're actually seeing is a video of years gone by which has just been generated by the building and the stones and, and everything surrounding that. It doesn't really frighten me, to be fair, because I'm, where I've obviously seen so much stuff in the past and you go into investigations, I go level-headed. Um, but I think for the average person, it would be frightening because if they were there and suddenly the light's gone out and you're seeing things, um, it makes you question yourself, really. The ghostly apparition was the high point of an exciting day at Bodmin for Tony. So whatever was there that day or whatever I did must have stirred something up because it wasn't one ghost there, there was quite a lot of playing tricks there. Put it as well, I slept the whole night that night. I didn't wake up the next day like till late because it took so much energy out of me. It was amazing, just, just the footage itself was amazing. Over 80 years since it was closed, the spirits of Bodmin Jail still remain locked away inside the prison's imposing walls. Built in 1779, Bodmin Jail in the county of Cornwall used to house thousands of dangerous criminals during its 153-year history. Even though the last of its inmates are long gone, many of their spirits still linger inside the dark cells of the prison. I think the reason that so many ghosts are still haunting Bodmin Jail is because they've never moved on. Their souls are trapped there, it is a place of power and energy, and all the misery and the executions that took place were kind of compounded to make it a honeypot of paranormal phenomena. Even skeptics have been converted by the activity in the 18th century jail. Would you would say sometimes, you know, when you've got your belief system and there's nothing there and suddenly you experience something out of that comfort zone, it will change people's lives. And that's what we do. We do our best to explain how it all works and what they're experiencing and sometimes why. You know, people get emotional sometimes, they build it all up. You can stress yourself up to the point where some people won't even come in the building. I've been to Bodmin Jail several times. Over the last decade, I've visited there probably more than three or four times. The location itself is atmospheric. It's very dark, it's very sinister, and it's the only place that I go to where I feel physically sick. It's, it affects me on a physical basis. The minute I get out of my vehicle and I step onto that land, it's almost like the energy itself kind of affects me. It makes me feel nauseous, I get dizzy. Like any building that's housed prisoners, there's an enormous amount of energy within there. People don't like being locked up. People don't like being told what they can and can't do. So that would give me the reason as to why there is so much energy still remaining in Bodmin Jail. Paranormal manager Mark and clairvoyant Kirsten concentrate on different branches of the supernatural, but share many of the same experiences. Kirsten is very sensitive to the building itself and what we generally find is that uh, we bounce off quite nicely with my sciencey side and her spiritual side. We have had some big experiences in the past whereby we finish for the night, clients have gone, there's only us on site, we're locking down. One night she thought it was me walking towards her up the yard. Right, she's spoken to me, I walked right by her. I was in the other side of the building completely. It was around this area that we're stood in now that I actually stopped to talk to him um, and ask him questions and then realised as this chap had come past me that it wasn't actually Mark. Bear in mind this was five o'clock in the morning, it was very, very dark and I immediately presumed it was Mark. We were the only people on site at the time. It's been very exciting for the last three years working with her because it's never dull.
Local ghost hunter Jason Higgs was filming in the jail's naval wing when he captured an unexplainable paranormal experience that shook him to the core. When we were filming down there, a big storm came in, got very windy, it even started hailing, moved all the cameras into an adjoining cell, waited for it to pass, set all the cameras back up again, and the gate hadn't moved an inch, the gate was open. And earlier on that evening, I said, you know, if there's something here, please can you shut the gate? It'd be great if you could walk into this area and maybe shut that door. And while I was setting up for the film in for the second time, I asked a question, I'm talking to camera, just saying about what I was gonna do that evening, and realizing next door, the camera was capturing the gate shutting on its own. And we've got footage of the gate and it shuts slightly, stops, shuts slightly again, stops, opens a bit more, and then shuts again. And I don't know to this day what has caused that gate to do that. Because the wind had stopped at this point, the hail had moved on, it was a clear evening but something had shut that gate. Some spirits are able to harness a great amount of energy so they can touch you, they can throw things, they can move things. I would call a higher energy a spirit more than a poltergeist. That's how I would describe it. So you're dealing with high energy, walking into a room and you feel a sensation or an emotion comes over you. Temperature has dropped massively. That's being around a spirit that has high energy. The physics-defying gate left Jason and many others wary of the unexplainable activity inside Bodmin Jail. There's a feeling of uneasiness, and I get it every single time I come here, so it's not as if it's a one-off. And when you speak to a lot of other people and they feel the same emotions, if you like, in the same places as you have, that just helps to collaborate, you know, scientifically especially, but as well as on a personal level, what may be going on in the jail. Paranormal expert and medium Joe Lockwood has also experienced the power that resides within the walls of the jail. I actually went there with my family and walking around, I was quickly made aware that there was a presence of a man. Now, the only way that I can describe this is that he was watching and following everywhere we went. And my little girl actually turned around and said, Mummy, I can see a man. And I said, what do you mean? She said, there's a man just at the side of us. I already knew he was there, but I didn't want to scare the children. And she said to me, he keeps on following us. And sure enough, he was following us. The only way I can describe him is his presence is quite, um, Authoritarian, if I can say that. He is quite oppressive, you know. The feelings of being watched quite sternly, you know, as if it's a watchful eye on you. I think that's the only way to describe him. During its 153 year history, 60 people were executed in and around Bodmin Jail, eight of whom were women. One of the most notorious hangings took place in 1878, the execution of 28-year-old mother of two, Selina Wadge. So Selina was a young girl. She was in love with a chap who promised her the world. Uh, he promised that she would give her uh, support, everything that she needed. And so for her, she fell in love. Uh, she believed and trusted this man. And he said, yes, absolutely fine. I'll give you anything you want, Selina. However, you can bring one child and support one. At that point, she made an awful decision to actually dispose of one of her children. He was disabled and she actually put him down a well and left him to die. She would have got away with this crime, because at the end of the day it was a crime, even though really it was kind of a crime of passion, a crime of, of the era and the times that she was living in. Only for her other child, who actually was coerced into giving information about his brother. This ended up and resulted in him telling the truth by literally bursting out with, he put the baby down the well. She was consequently arrested and handed over to Bodmin Jail for execution. Ghost hunter Sally Mason is more than aware of Selena. 
I know that she's an energy here that many, many people do, I suppose, see and feel and pick up on. She makes herself known to pregnant women, um, people with children throughout the day. I think the reason that Selena's spirit likes to approach pregnant women whilst at Bodmin Jail is because she feels sorrowful and remorseful for the act of murdering her own child. And we've picked up her energy a couple of times throughout the jail. The equipment has reacted to her name. We've had other people say that they've felt a female figure around them and they've seen an image of a woman. Many people visiting the jail have made contact with Selena. From the reports of eyewitnesses, the Selena spirit is more likely to be an intelligent spirit, an intelligent haunting, a spirit that's able to manifest and interact with the living. She's clearly there, distressed and feeling remorseful about losing her own child, and therefore she interacts with the living to try and get some kind of salvation from all this. My experience personally with her is very different, kind of calmer than most people's would be. She's appeared to me very briefly uh, through her son, not herself. She's been very intimidated by me. She's felt very, very timid and unnerved by myself. Her son actually expressed to me that his mum was very, very nervous and didn't want to speak to me directly. She just wanted me to know that she was there. Kirsten believes that Selena was a victim of her time and environment. I just think that the story carries a lot of weight emotionally. Um, for her, it's not like that. You know, she fell in love, she put all her trust into somebody, and that all backfired for her. Nowadays, you know, if you look at it, she just had that child. He wasn't very old, um, postnatal depression, maybe anxiety and all the other things that stresses that society pushes on you. And I think it was just an accumulation of all those factors and stress and promises and actually being in a position where you have no idea what to do in life. 140 years since her execution, Selina Wadge is still searching for redemption. But many of the spirits at Bodmin Jail are unforgiving and will use their full force to express themselves. The small civil parish of Bodmin has been overlooked by its famous jail for centuries. The imposing building that casts a dark shadow over the Cornish town used to imprison the most despicable of criminals, but now a bevy of spirits inhabit the prison where death was part of life. I do actually think the executions would have an impact onto the paranormal activity that's there because we all know if anything happens untoward, it's unfinished business. So it would lead me to believe that there are still people hanging around in Bodmin Jail. During one of my many investigations of Bodmin Jail, we experienced so many different phenomena, from auditory phenomena in terms of EVPs, electronic voice phenomena. We captured what sounded like ghost voices whispering and talking deep within the penal institute. On a separate occasion, myself and my team were investigating in the areas where the cells were, and we captured what appears to be electricity, lightning shooting up one of the wooden railings. And this is a common phenomenon that's been experienced by many different people that have visited this location, and that electrical energy seems to be quite prevalent at this location. Paranormal investigator Sally Mason has experienced this energy firsthand. I think it was towards the end of last year, there was an electrical storm here. And just after the storm, there was a new energy that was quite strong and quite frightening for a few of our guests. They had some really profound experiences there. After the storm had passed, Sally and her fellow enthusiasts captured a spectacular light display. We were taking some pictures around the whole of the jail and we got some amazing images of orbs. So not just one or two here and there, which is your regular, there were so many of them. So there was all sorts of energy moving around the jail, different colours, some were lighter than others, some were brighter than others. So that was exciting for us. 
So we spoke about Selena Wage. It was Alex that was my husband that was talking about it. As he was talking about her outside the cell that she was in before she got executed, there is an image of an orb that comes and moves, very, very small, but quite bright, um, as he's talking about her. It's quite distinctive. This orb seems to move in and out and has its own kind of energy signature and flow of movement. But the electrical storm may well have kind of incited this phenomenon to take place. It might have charged the environment and given those spirits some of the energy required to move around in the video. Um, the cool thing that I found about the video was a lot of things that people say when they see orbs is it's dust. It's dust, you're in an old place, obviously you're gonna pick up these little things that look like orbs, but they like glowed. You could tell the difference from what you were seeing from dust to an orb, which I thought was really a very, very cool capture. Orbs are believed to be the early manifestations of a spirit. Sally's husband, Alex, was there on the night that they appeared so vividly. I believe it's a way of them trying to show themselves. It's the most basic form to make in nature. You have all planets around, bubbles around. It's just the most basic form of consciousness, I believe. Alex remembers his first visit to the 18th century prison. Bobman Jail is the place that all ghost hunters really want to get into. We heard about the reputation years ago, and Sally knew a friend who came here, and so we decided to jump on and get in here. So we were desperate to get into this old building. It's a dream to be here, really. During one of the team's regular investigations, Alex experienced the full force of Bodmin Jail's energy for himself. That was about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, everyone decided, was downstairs in the long room and I just had this exciting feeling to uh, grab a few bits of equipment and head to the top floor on my own. I'd never gone off on my own in this place before, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to do it. So I grabbed a few bits of equipment, headed upstairs, and I could hear footsteps coming up the stairwell. I was calling out down the hallway, saying, is anybody there, hello? And then, without warning, there was a big bang over my shoulder. So, in the footage, you'll see me jump before the camera actually falls. I haven't got a clue what hit it, but it absolutely terrified me as the I turned around, put my light on, and the camera and the reel, all the wiring was on the floor. This video footage is interesting. It clearly shows somebody responding to auditory phenomena, footsteps seemingly coming up the stairs. Whether or not the spirit was trying to kind of play a trick or show itself, we don't know. But the other phenomena that takes place is again, light phenomena, spirit orbs that seem to fly past on the video. This could well be dust, and it could just be coincidental that it happened at the time of this unexplained footsteps. But the camera falling off at the exact same time could be significant. Maybe the spirit was in the room and in the area and tried well to get the attention of the investigator by throwing that camera to the floor. I mean, I would definitely jump. I mean, as a paranormal investigator, you try not to get too shaken up because you're going in there to investigate spirits and debunk. But yeah, when you're asking for communication, I mean, spirits aren't a circus act, so they don't just perform when you're like, show me you're here, knock on the door. They're like, okay, no, how about not? So when they do, it scares you and then it's exciting. So I bet you he had a whole bunch of adrenaline surging through his body at that moment. I wouldn't lie, I was actually terrified. On my own, four floors above everyone else, I was absolutely terrified. The first thing I did was to straighten up the camera and head straight back downstairs again. Bodmin Jail is a hive of paranormal activity. Resident clairvoyant Kirsten has become a conduit between the real and the spirit world. 
to be able to connect with somebody when they're not here any longer to tell their own version of events, their own stories, to me is very important that the correct story for them is told and the people that they actually were because everyone knows the people, the prisoners here for the crimes they committed. They didn't actually know the people they were and how they became to be in this jail and how their crime came to be in the first place and I think that's missed a lot. People take things at face value, they killed a child or they robbed somebody, but what brought them to that in the first place is really important to me, to know their history as well. If you think of human beings, pretty much the spiritual world is the same. So really you're dealing with the energetic imprint of a person from a moment in time. So you get the warder types, which can be quite aggressive. We're in a prison, so not everybody was light and fluffy in here. So we end up with a whole mixture of personalities, she we say. With so much activity in the air, it's no wonder that Mark has seen a number of unexplainable events in the corridors of the infamous jail. So we have many reported things in the building itself. One of the most interesting would be probably the footsteps on the stairs. Electronic voice phenomena will pick up these. And you often hear people, footsteps running about. We get lots of movement, lots of people being shoved, pushed, moved around as they stand still even in the building itself. But this level down here, technically we're under the middle of the building itself. And probably the most exciting bit for me is this is where I saw my first ever full manifestation in the building. It was a night that Mark would never forget. I just stood here in the corridor talking to somebody about the weather and then suddenly we watched as a gentleman, or the shape of a gentleman, walked from this corridor here straight past us and straight down the other corridor. And uh, it's interesting because this is one of our original doors here from Bobman Jail. We put it here temporarily whilst we work on the, the hotel next door. So this guy walks through. The temperature dropped, all the hairs went up, as you'd expect, what we call the adrenaline system kicked in, or the flight-flight response. There was a crackling in the atmosphere. It was quite interesting, you could hear it. It went darker, and then it came back up to normal darkness. I was buzzing, really excited, because ultimately that's what people come for, to see a full manifestation. And it was one of many, but that was my first one. And they say you never forget your first full manifestation. And that's true. This guy was excellent. He was grey, perfectly shaped, walking straight past us. Bodmin Jail is a fascinating insight into a dark part of British history. The deranged criminals that once inhabited these ominous cells have now been replaced with their otherworldly counterparts. If the towering walls of this mighty prison could talk, they would tell tales of unfathomable horror. You can see it from most of Bodmin, and when you look down, you realise then that this building was a prison. And the fact that it was built in the 1700s, a sinister structure, it's thick granite walls, and people were hung here, so it was a dark place. It's such an imposing building. A lot of people and children were kept in this building for things like um, stealing potatoes and burning haystacks, and they were put here, and they did go through a lot of bad things. But coming back here, for me, I do feel that it is quite a positive place to be now. And I feel that I would definitely return here to do investigations if I have an opportunity later on, that I would definitely come back. It's worth it. Even as the old gives way to the new, the planned luxury hotel is unlikely to dampen the spirits at Bodmin Jail. There's been nobody up there since the landing's collapsed. So um, literally we're talking over 100 years with nobody in their rooms at all. So when they become hotel rooms, it's going to be interesting. I look forward to reading the visitor's book, should we say, because I'll know the hot spots then. And then we can go from there and try and find out what's going on.